Now let me quickly run you through the whole chapter in a summarized manner. We started with economics. We defined economics as many wants and less resources, scarce resources. It's striking a balance between unlimited wants and limited resources. Then we did the meaning of the word economics. We studied the roots of the word economics. We said economics has come from two Greek roots which is oikos and nomos. Oikos means household, nomos means law. So it is a law to govern a household. How do you manage your house? How do you run your finances in the house? That's economics. Then we did the definitions part. We did the definitions given by various eminent economists. And the first definition was given by Adam Smith. He gave the wealth definition. Adam Smith said economics is an inquiry into the nature and the causes of wealth of nations. So we call this definition as a wealth definition. The next definition was given by Dr. Alfred Marshall. He gave us the welfare definition. He gave us the welfare definition. He shifted the focus away from wealth to welfare. Then we studied the definition of Pigu, who said economics is a science of welfare of human beings, but it has to be measured in the rod of money. So he gave us the money measuring rod definition. Professor Lionel Robbins also gave us a definition. He gave us the definition of choice making. He gave us the definition of scarcity. He gave us the definition of problem solving in economics. And how do we solve the problems in economics? By striking a balance between unlimited wants and limited resources. By making a choice as to which resource is to be applied to satisfy which want. So he gave us a definition giving a relation between ends and scarce means. Then we did the definition of Mr. Paul Samuelson. He gave us the definition saying economics gives us future growth. Economic leads to future development. So this definition was called as dynamic growth definition. Then we studied the definition of Henry Smith. What did he say? Henry Smith said that economics is nothing but obtaining one's share from the society. What is the product given to the whole society and how do you obtain your share from it? So his definition is called as share of other. Finally, Jacob Weiner defined economics as economics is what economists do. This is how we did our definitions part. Then we moved to study economics and we said economics is studied in two parts. First is the macro uh, first is the microeconomics, the other is the macroeconomics. What we study in microeconomics is product pricing, consumer behavior, factor pricing, economic conditions of a section, study of a firm, location of industry. Now, if you observe, these are the factors which are related only to the 
particular unit only to an individual unit it is a small section it is a firm it is an individual these factors relate to so microeconomics is economics which relates to a particular or an individual unit like a individual like a family like a household like a firm or a industry then we studied the factors of macroeconomics what we did in macroeconomics was we studied national income and output general price level balance of trade and balance of payment value of money in a country employment in a country savings and investment of the whole nation now these are the concepts which affect the nation as a whole because macroeconomics is an economics of aggregates then we saw how economics is studied economics is studied as a science and arts and if we study economics as a science we study it as a positive science we study it as a normative science there are also methods to study economics and there are two methods first is deductive method and the second is inductive method and then we came to the problems of economics the central problems of economy the first problem is what to produce the second problem is how to produce third is for whom to produce and finally how do we provide for future growth and then we did production possibilities curve in the in production possibilities curve we studied what the production possibility curve is the opportunity cost in a production possibility curve the shape of a production possibility curve the characteristics of production possibility curve and then we did a couple of questions on production possibility curve and in our last topic we studied the solutions to the central economic problems there are three approaches to solving the economic problems from the point of view of a nation the first approach is the capitalist approach the second approach is the socialist approach and the last approach is the mixed economy approach this brings us to the end of the first chapter in economics and introduction to microeconomics now you should be able to answer the questions based on this chapter